just like for scalar line integrals, we have additivity properties for vector line integrals that basically say the same thing. Something like if our, your curve C is the union of curves you know, C1, C2, C3. I'm just going to write this for three curves. You can write it for two, you can write it for four, you can write it for as many as you want to. The integral over C of F dot dr is equal to, you do an integral over C1 of F dot dr plus the integral over C2 of F dot dr plus the integral over C3 of F dot dr. You just compute all of this separately. So sometimes, you know, like if you have something like this here, is your curve C, oops, let me draw that and then going in the right direction. Let's say that this is our curve C here. Well, you know, it, we, it would be difficult to get a parametrization that's very nice that does this, then this, then this. So what we do is that we parametrize this first and then we parametrize this and then we parametrize this and do three separate vector line integrals and then add up our answers to get, get the overall final answer. So as an example of this, uh, take a look here, evaluate the integral of f dot dr, uh, where f is equal to e to the z comma e to the y comma x plus y. And what is c here? c is a triangle joining these three points and it's oriented CCW counterclockwise when you're viewing it from above. So let's draw a picture here so we know what's going on. So the point one, zero, zero, it's on the positive X axis. The point zero, one, zero, it's on the positive Y axis. The point zero, zero, one is on the positive Z axis. So we want to make this triangle, and then this view is from above, and so we want this to be oriented counterclockwise. And so we just need to call this, you know, call this C1, C2, C3 as appropriate, as, as we just did in the, uh, in the picture right here. So we'll be using this property. So C1, C2, and C3. Okay, so we've got three vector line integrals to do. We need to parametrize each one of them. Um, so let's just get to work here. So for C1, we need a parametrization, I call R1 of T. We need to go from zero, sorry, one zero zero to zero one zero. So let's see here. The z component is zero, always. The y component increases from zero to one. So let's make that t and have t run from zero to one. So the y component will increase from zero to one. And then we want the x component to decrease from one to zero. So we make this one minus t, that should do the trick. So this is our C1, R1 of t is one minus t, t comma zero. R1 prime of t is going to be negative one, one, and zero. Uh, let's do f of R1 of t. We know we need to substitute in Remember once again here what's going on here. We need to substitute in R of T into our F. We already computed this. So E to the Z is zero. E to the Y is T, E to the T, E to the T. X plus Y is going to be one minus T plus T. And so this gets simplified as one e to the t m one. 
Okay, so f of r1 of t, and now we know we need to do f of r1 of t dot the derivative. So f of r1 of t dot r1 prime of t. So this dotted with this is negative one times one is negative one, plus one times e to the t plus e to the t, zero times one plus zero. So we have e to the t minus one. Okay, so the integral over c1 of f dot dr is equal to the integral from t runs from zero to one of negative one plus e to the t dt. I'm just going to write down the final answer here is e minus two. Okay, so the integral along here, integral along here is e minus two. So now we need to do integral along c2. We need a parameterization of c2. So r2 of t, let's see here. The first component stays constant of zero. The third component goes from zero to one, so let's make that t. Second component goes from one to zero. One minus t, this should do the trick. Okay, and we need to do the same calculations here. R2 prime of t is zero, negative one, one. R2, uh, let's see, we need f, f of R2 of t. So f was, remember, e to the z, e to the t here e to the y, e to the one minus t. Make sure you're substituting r of t, r2 of t, not r2 prime of t. Make sure we're using this. And then x plus y, zero plus one minus t here. So this is f of r2 of t. Okay, and now we need f of r2 of t dot r2 prime of t. So zero times e to the t is zero, negative e to the one minus t, and then one times one minus t here. So this is our integrand, so the integrand over c2 of f of dot dr is equal to the integral from zero to one of negative e to the one minus t plus one minus t dt and again i'm just going to skip to the final answer here is three halves minus e so our integral of long c2 is three halves minus uh, e we have one more integral to compute the integral along c3 so our three of t is going to be, let's see here, the first component goes from zero to one, so we'll make that t, let t run from zero to one. The second component stays put at zero, the third component goes from one to zero, one minus t, this will work. Our three prime of t is one, zero, negative one f of r3 of t, oops, not r3 prime of t, but it's r3 of t. Okay, so we have e to the z, e to the one minus t, e to the y, e to the zero here, so that would just be one, x plus y is t plus zero. So this is e to the one minus t, comma, e to the zero is one, comma, t. So that f of r3 of t dot r3 prime of t, this dot list, one more dot product is one times e to the one minus t, is e to the one minus t plus zero times one is zero, minus t there. So integral over c3 of f dot dr is equal to the integral from t runs from zero to one of e to the one minus t minus t here dt 
And again, I'm going to write down the final answer here is negative 3 halves plus e. And so our final, final, final answer is going to be the answer we get for the integral over c1, which is e minus 2. So once again, we're using additivity here. The overall integral over c is the sum of the integrals over the three components. e minus 2, the integral over c2 is 3 halves minus e. And the integral over c3 is negative 3 halves plus e. And those actually just cancel. So our final answer here is e minus 2.